Hi guys, it's Stuart from PCAS. I'd like to take you through a bit of a sneak peek today of our latest project that we've done in partnership with JCB, Spartan Site Solutions and a hospital in the East Midlands. It consists of two 1250 kVA diesel generators. These engines have been manufactured for JCB specifically for the hospital, utilising the Cummins KTA38 and the Stanford alternator. The interesting part of this project I want to sort of bring to your attention is utilising the new Comac system, the IG1000, including the Intellivision 5.2. Some of the interesting bits I'm going to speak to you today about that is going to be sort of showcasing what its capabilities are with regards to the cyber security element. It's got several IP ports that you can utilise for local area networks, obviously the, the, the usual air gate system and obviously going out to your own data centre or whatever you may be doing to be able to remotely monitor the system from the office or from your armchair at home. The reason that we have chosen this application is because it allows us to do the correct load acceptance to 60% in the event of a mains failure that is part of the HTM. So today I'm going to show you around, give you a little bit of a sneak peek and let me know what your thoughts are. So the next part I'm going to introduce to you is a new Comap Intellivision 5.2 and the IG1000. I'm going to go through this in a little bit more detail so that I can show you the new control system that's coming through by Comap. Specifically, we're going to be doing a slightly bit of a case study on this project because it's two of the 1250s KVA synchronising and I believe it's the first of the kind at the moment what's out in the UK. So first up we've got the Intellivision 5.2. It's a digital display, coloured. It allows for ease of knowing when there's an alarm. It allows for basic sort of instrumentation from the generator, such as your kilowatts, your power factor, generator frequency, voltage, oil pressure, coolant temperature, fuel level and RPMs. The good thing with the new IG1000, what I've worked out myself in the last couple of days, it also does a trending screen, which I actually utilised whilst load banking and found that was an issue with the generator. Whilst we were doing the load banking prior to handover, I noticed that there was quite a bit of um, movement on the, on the RPM. On further investigation, I actually found that one of the newly supplied non-return valves given to us by the supplier was actually faulty. We replaced it during the load bank, started the generator up again and it worked perfectly. So the trending screen on this actually came into use during the commissioning stage of this project. If I scroll through the screens, again, it's very user friendly, typical Comap controls, which is obviously what I like. Across most of our projects, we utilize it due to the ease of the PLC. The PLC is very user friendly, which I'm gonna show you a little bit in a minute that we're gonna go through. But if you scroll through the screens, you've got your standard sort of screens what you would expect to see with a Comap. Slightly, it's a little bit more user friendly. Like I say, the synchronization screen and things like that, you can utilize whilst you're doing your commissioning. But at the same time, it's user friendly for your clients that are coming in to do their monthly checks to see whether the generator is gonna sync and close its GCB correctly. Another good starting point with Comap and why I like it is because when I'm doing some remote testing with the client, if they're going through some faults that they may be seeing, they can actually see the inputs or outputs in the state that it's actually in at that present moment in time. It allows them to take a photograph of whether the unit's been activated or the alarm's been activated or whether the emergency stop has been pressed in. If you look here, if we've got the emergency stop, which is usually a closed signal and it opens when it's been pressed in, if we were to press that in now, like I say, you're able to see that it goes to a zero and the alarm starts. Some other controllers, what we do utilise in the industry, sometimes you have to connect up a computer to be able to see that, which again, from a fault finding perspective, you usually have to engineer on site, laptop and everything else that you may require to complete that task. So guys, I'm going to introduce you to the new base box, the Intelligen 1000. As you can see, it's very much different to the original IGS NT CBB that you are used to seeing whilst you're out and about in the field. This also uses Comap's new software, IntelliConfig. Again, it's very user friendly. I quite enjoy using it. So going into some of the basics or the differences of this compared to the IGS NTC, now the screen's working through a Cat5. This allows for a more responsive time when you're scrolling through the screen. It's slightly quicker than the original IV5, although we still use the IV5 on certain projects. But this one, I wanted to showcase to you the ease of use of the new IG1000 controller or IntelliJ. 1000. So the differences are you have a CAN bus but you also have the redundant CAN bus built in which you can actually utilize straight away when you're using it on, on several units across a site where you can actually do up to 64 now where the original was 32. 
you've got three Cat5 ports, so this allows for a more secure system. You can have one Cat5 port going out to the outside world, you can have one going into your local area network. This is very, very good when you're utilising the new IntelliSCADA, which we are going to show you through on another project in a couple of weeks' time. As you can see guys, there's no IG AVRI unit anymore, it is all internally built in to the new Comap Intelligent 1000 unit, which again allows for a little bit more space saving. When we've trialled it against IGS NTC, we've actually saved a little bit of space. As you can see, we're using the IGS PTM module, which is an expansion module for when we're doing slightly more complex projects and we need more inputs and outputs than the standard amount that is supplied with us, which on this unit is 12, so again it's mirroring the IGS NTC base box. We utilise the IGS PTM on this project for running the Luba control and the fuel system. It utilises a CAN bus so that we can actually see if the unit has failed it will flag an alarm up on the IntelliGen 1000 to tell us that that has happened. Okay guys, as you can see, this is the IntelliConfig system that we use to program the new IG1000. As you can see, it's very modern. It makes a lot of sense to some of the younger engineers that we work alongside. When they're on site and we're going through questions if they're having any issues on site, we can actually dial in and see this remotely. Again, you guys may not have utilised the IntelliConfig software, but as you can see, the, the PLC has slightly changed when you look at the PLC monitor. Not by a lot, but again, some of the younger engineers can actually understand this PLC because they actually learn this sort of stuff now at school. And I think it's going to be the future of the younger generation to learn this type of PLC and not the old school ladder logic.